Are you more confused than ever about food, health, fitness? Have you tried every single diet or workout plan that's out there, but then when you look into the mirror, you're not happy with the results you see, or you're just as tired as ever, or you step onto that scale and the numbers never change? Well, you're not alone. And this week, my guest, Niku Lo, she is a holistic certified fitness trainer that is going to unlock the secrets of how food can impact your body in a positive way if you know how to eat. She's going to discuss all of the misinformation that's out here, why we are so confused about food, health, fitness. And if you're going to be a great leader and if you're going to be taking charge of your life, well, then you need to get your notepad out because Niku is going to share some incredible, tangible strategies that you can put into place today to help you feel better, to have your fitness be better, so that you have the right energy to go out and generate those consistent results that you're looking for. So what are you waiting for? Let's get going. My interview with Niku Loesch. Hi, and welcome to another episode of You're in Charge, uh, Conversations That Spark Change. I'm your host, Glenn Pash, and each week we bring some fascinating guests here to help you take charge of your both your professional and your personal life. Uh, we're all in charge of something at certain times, and a lot of times we're put in positions to be in charge and we weren't trained to do it. Sometimes we don't think we're skilled enough to do it, but we're going to give you some strategies to help you out. So today I'm really excited. Uh, my guest is Niku Loesch. She is a certified holistic health coach. I know that's a big mouthful, but what I'm fascinated about her journey and what she created over this last year as well as this online community, I followed it. It's called Elevate Tribe. It's an online training community using Pilates and yoga and bar and mental and health to help women as well as men uh, through their journeys to be able to be their best selves in their lives. So without further ado, Niku, so glad that you joined me today. Thank you, Glenn. Very, very glad, blessed, and thankful to be here with you. So let's just dive right in. Um, what in your mind is the biz, biggest misconception or biggest thing holding people back from really taking charge of their health? That seems a little daunting, but when people are coming to you, what, what's their biggest question? What's their biggest thing holding them back? I think there's so many things, but if we were to narrow it down to the, the top ones that I see, number one, it's the lack of knowledge. You, you mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know. So a lot of mm -hmm. people think they're being healthy. They think they're eating healthy. They think they have all these great routines, but unfortunately we're not truly educated on what's healthy and what's not. For instance, like with food, right? People come to right. me and they're like, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to, you know, get better sleep. I'm eating really healthy. I'm like, well, explain to me what does that look like? What is right. healthy? And they're like, you know, for breakfast, I have a whole grain bagel with low fat cream cheese and an egg on the side with, um, you know, some, a little salad, whatever. And I'm like, mm, we already got a food combining problem. We already got a gluten problem. We already got a sugar problem. We already got a quote unquote low fat problem, which means that there's excess sugars in there to make those products taste good with fillers. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, okay, so it's this misconception of what is healthy versus what is not. And this has been my life's work. I've been trying to educate myself on um, what works best for me and my body since I was 15 years old. I just had the the pleasure of turning 34 last Friday. So I'm one week into my well, 34th congratulations, year. Congratulations, belated birthday. Thank you very much. And, you know, for the last 19 years, I've been, I've experimented with every sort of fad diet that there mm -hmm. is. I've done Whole30. I've done paleo. I've done vegan. I've done plant-based. I've done keto. I've done uh, one meal. I mean, you name it. If, if there was an intermittent fast out there or the type of diet right. out there, I've tried it on my body to see what feels best for me. And also to educate myself for clients that come to me that say, you know, I, I live a keto lifestyle. I eat keto or mm -hmm. I'm plant-based. And I wanted to feel in my body when I was eating that way for a prolonged period of time, what was the positive, what was the downfall and how could I help supplement some of the deficiencies? So unfortunately, here in the US, marketing is amazing. Like right. we are one of the best marketing we, yeah. countries in the world. 
So you go and you buy, like I'm going shopping for, for my one and a half year old. And I'm trying to find healthy foods. I'm doing that quote unquote healthy foods. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the, the baby section, the kids section. And on the front of the box, it says healthy, whole grain, omegas, good for the brain development. And then I flip it over. And because I know better, I don't right. just read what's on the front of the box, right? I'm not just reading the commercial. I'm not going to let you sell me based on your marketing strategy. I want to see what's actually in this product. So I'm going to look at the nutrition label. I'm going to see the saturated fat versus the unsaturated, the macros, the carbs, the protein, the fat, and more specifically, I'm going to read the ingredients and the order of the ingredients is very important because whatever comes first is the highest amount. And as I'm reading the ingredients, yes, on the front of the box, it says it's whole grain. It's good for the brain. But then when I flip it over on the back of the box, there's all these corn starches and modified foods that are in there and sugars and all these things that are not good for the brain. So although the marketing on the front says good for heart health, good for the brain on the back, I know better. This thing is being infused. It's processed good with a ton of sugars to make it taste good. And a lot of things to make us addicted to the food, because that's how these companies stay alive. And it's not to say that all companies are bad, but you know, I've had to research what's good versus what's not, what's clean versus what's not. And the number of my clients come to me, they're like, Nico, I'm so healthy. I'm eating, you know, these, these whole foods and these whole grains and all this stuff. I have oatmeal for breakfast every day. And I'm like, oh my God, you probably have a SIBO issue just based off your oatmeal, which was probably the Quaker oats with the brown sugar in it. Cause that's the one that tastes the best. So you're right. addicted to the sugar and you have all this excess gluten and fiber in your gut lining. That's why you're not digesting foods properly. It's just that lack of knowledge. So really educating my clients on the knowledge. And then number two, a lot of people don't have the means of seeking a coach. A lot of people don't have the means of seeking a coach, someone that can help guide them through this process, or they don't even know, like, did you know what a holistic health coach was before you met me? No, the word actually holistic gets thrown around a lot in marketing. So it's funny you say that. Um, But yes, I I, I think from a holistic meaning everything, Mm -hmm. but Uh, And doing more research, I could see how you are also not just, well, we're going to do physical, Mm -hmm. but you're also talking about what goes into your body. I had a very good friend years ago, and to this day, I always remember it, uh, is he, uh, you know, he he was not necessarily an athlete, right? uh, um, But he was always very fit. And his whole mantra was 85% of your health is what you put in your mouth. And he would say, you could work out every day, but if you're eating horribly, it's not going to work. Or if you turn around and you say, um, well, I eat really well, but I'm not exercising. And he was saying it was this combination of both of these, of always saying, what are you putting in? That's the fuel to the engine. Um, and I think to, to what you're saying is, is it's very confusing, especially with all of these diets and you know, you go into the supermarket, the magazine aisle has the newest craze of this new, newest diet. And, and so let me ask you on that. Is there, I don't want to say, is there a diet or a way of eating that is perfect? Or is it really to what you say was, I need to understand your body and who you are, and then we can de- design fuel so to speak, for your body. Is that a better way to function? 100%. So I I have clients that come to me and they're like, Niku, I I have adverse reactions when I eat meat or I cannot eat shellfish. There's a lot of people out there that are allergic to shellfish. So I can't expect them to eat the way that I eat. I love shellfish. So it's about finding out number one, based on every client that comes to me, what is their preference, right? Because we all have different values and morals and and thought processes around food. So what is their preference? Number one. Number two, what are their sensitivities? Do they have food allergies, intolerances, or sensitivities? And then based on that information, then I go ahead and I find out what are their goals? Are they looking for weight loss? Are they looking for gut health resetting? Are they looking to get rid of chronic inflammation? Are they dealing mentally with brain fog, fatigue, cognition issues? Like I really find out specifically for each client, what is their issue? What are their pain points? What are their goals? What are their preferences? What are any digestive issues that they currently have? And then based on that, I create a plan that I believe will work best for them. And then we have to check in like the first two weeks are crucial because I might come up with the, come up with a meal plan and a program for this person that after a week we see, okay, they're, they're, bloating has gone down, their sleep has improved, but there's not feeling like they might have a little skin rash that's popping up. Okay. Where's that skin rash coming from? Because if you're someone that has 
eczema, psoriasis, cystic acne, oftentimes these skin issues, I would say the majority of the time are coming from something in the gut. So we really work hand in hand for four weeks closely together to find the best plan for you. And it's, it's individual to every single person's microbiome. Every, every body's different. Do you think though, so, so countering, you know, just to bounce ideas off, what if they don't know, you know, I come here and you say to me, well, what's, what is your best? And you're going, I, I don't know. Or what mm -hmm. are you sensitive to? I don't know. Is there something that someone could do where maybe tracking food that they eat yeah. at what time? And then if you have a reaction, you write that time down where you as the analyst can go back yes. and say, oh, well, see, you ate this and three hours later you had this. And then two days later, you ate something similar to that again. And you had that reaction. I think what happens is that in my perception is time goes on and we mm -hmm. may allocate our the, the problem to the wrong cause, but we're not paying attention to that. 